Okay, guys, I'm going to read over Proverbs 28, but first I want to mention some things for anybody who watches this, that uh, in the next few days I'm getting some upgrades and things that I'm really excited about on... Actually, uh, tomorrow I'm supposed to be getting a new phone delivered, the Note 20, so I'm really excited about that because my current phone, the Note 4, which I've had for probably three or four years or maybe longer, I don't know, but it's getting really slow and it's hard to do a lot of things on there. So this new camera is going to be up to speed and it's going to have, I mean I said camera, but phone, but yeah, it's going to have better cameras and I think that I'm going to be able to do a lot more recordings with it and they're going to look really nice. And on Tuesday I'm getting an internet upgrade. My speed's going to get a little better. I don't know how much better that's really going to be. It's the fastest that my company offers, which isn't really extremely fast, but uh, if it doesn't meet my needs, I might have to get a different company. But hopefully, uh, I think that what I want is just a little bit faster, and that's what I should get. So, um, And that's actually going to make my bill a little cheaper, too, which is cool. But I'm excited about those things. I think that I think I will be able to do more videos with the new phone, just little quick videos or whatever. Um, it won't be kind of a hassle like my phone is now, and it'll be a much higher quality. And sometimes, in some ways, the phone can be better than the computer sometimes because I have problems with the editing or whatever. So hopefully this recording turns out all right. This is on the computer. <laughs> So, we're almost through Proverbs, and I'm going to go over Proverbs 28. And, you know what, I've got my other channel, One True Misfit, and I've been excited that I found out that I could stream on the PlayStation 4, so I've been doing that. And I just mentioned that because that might be something I'll do with my phone. I could do live streaming on, on here, but... I've tried to do live streaming with my computer before and it pretty much failed, so I don't know if that's because of my computer equipment or because of the internet speed. You know, the internet speed could fix that to maybe where I can stream from my computer, but I should probably be able to stream for sure from my phone. So I might do that sometime on this channel. I might just go live and uh, whatever, so with the phone. So that's another exciting feature of the phone that I could do. So anyway. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. And so that portrays the wicked as cowards. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like a lot of people talk a big game, and then when push comes to shove, you know, they're out of there. Uh, but, you know, the righteous, we're supposed to have more confidence with the Lord when God's on our side. And, you know, we shouldn't fear man and everything. So, it's just kind of a general rule. Proverbs 28, 2, For the transgression of a land, many are the princes thereof. For the transgression of a land, many are the princes thereof. But by a man of understanding and knowledge, the state thereof shall be prolonged. Now, I'm not sure exactly what that means, but basically talks about a man of understanding and knowledge will keep his land. Basically how it's talking about keeping your livestock fed well and looked after previously. And so it sounds like the transgression of a land, which means basically losing the land or whatever, uh, says many are the princes thereof. That just makes me think, you know, many, I don't know if he's saying that many people do that, many people will lose their land because many people are fools, and it takes someone special to, to keep their land. I'm not exactly sure what he means by the many, many are the princes thereof. Or maybe he means... the transgression of land, it could mean that different rulers come in and different kings come in and, you know, kings lose their land and so more kings come in, more princes, 
when, you know, a man of understanding, there would be one that would keep the land for a long time. Could mean that, too, I guess. Uh, verse 3 says, A poor man that opp oppresseth the poor is like a sweeping rain which leaveth no food. A poor man that oppresseth the poor is like a sweeping rain which leaveth no food. That's not a good thing. There, they that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. We see a lot of that today. <laughs> but, um, yeah, <laughs> forsake the law. But, yeah, I mean, I guess it doesn't mean the police law. That's kind of like what you think. But, I mean, I guess, I mean, God's law, the law of the land, and it could be applied in a lot of ways. But, yes, um... You know, the righteous law. I'm still kind of stuck on the verse before, a poor man that opposes the poor. I kind of want to look into that. Uh, we would think of, like, the rich oppressing the poor or something, but uh, the poor oppressing the poor. Evil men understand not judgment. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know. I guess a poor man he could go after other people who don't have much seeking help and then basically it hurts both people and, and really nobody's getting anything i don't know number five evil men understand not judgment but they that seek the lord understand all things better is the poor that walketh in his uprightness than he that is perverse in his ways though he be rich. Better is the poor that walketh in his uprightness than he that is perverse in his ways, though he be rich. Amen. We see, you know, a lot of people that are rich and famous being praised today. Poor people being overlooked. And, you know, we can all be guilty of it, but we always need to be humble and remember those that are sick and in need. And I was thinking about the verse before, too, how it says, They that seek the Lord understand all things. And it talks about evil men not understanding judgment. And there could be naysayers that look at that verse saying that they who seek the Lord understand all things. So they'll say, like, you know, all believers understand all things. So do I understand... Um, the technicalities when it comes to building spaceships or something like that. I don't No, I don't understand all those things and that's not what it means. It sounds like a sweeping statement. But uh but you know, basically it was talking about before about judgment. Uh we kind of understand and I guess morality and, and wickedness and righteousness and kind of how those things go and why things can happen, etc. And we understand that we are God's creation. And uh, we understand sin. And so a lot of those things that people who aren't believers reject, you know, that shows their ignorance and their foolishness, how they really don't understand what life is really about. So, it's not meant to be a statement where we understand every single thing, like literally, but you should get the point. But people would try to use that to attack the Bible or something, but it's just foolish. Verse 7 says, Whoso keepeth the law is a wise son, but he that is a companion of riotous men Shameth his father. Hello, Antifa. He that by usury and unjust gain increaseth his substance, he shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. He 
he shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. I don't understand what that means. I don't, you know, we know if it's unjust, if he's getting gains in an unjust way, it's not a good thing. He shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. Hmm. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. That's a strong message there. Whoso causeth the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit, but the upright shall have good things in possession. Pretty powerful statements. And whoever shall cause the righteous to go astray. Um, that makes me think of... Mm, it makes me think of, I guess, what Jesus said. If anyone... Um, I can't remember the exact verse. But you know about the children, it would be better if he had a millstone around his neck and he was thrown into the sea or whatever. Uh, kind of the same idea. The rich man is wise in his own conceit, but the poor that hath understanding searcheth him out. And I'm guessing, you know, searcheth God out, I would think, but the poor that hath understanding searcheth him out. Search out God for his wisdom. The rich man, you know, talking about, you know, like an unbelieving rich man, because Solomon was a very rich man, and, you know, King David, they were very wealthy. So we're talking about, you know, somebody who's an unbeliever who, you know, their riches are their God. They're basically their own God, that's what he's saying. They don't see the need for heaven, heavenly counsel. When righteous men do rejoice, there is great glory, but when the wicked rise, a man is hidden. When righteous men do rejoice, there is great glory, but when the wicked rise, a man is hidden. What does that mean, that a man is hidden? When the wicked rise. It could mean that they do it in secret, basically, like, when the righteous do something, you know, it's all out for the open for everybody to see, but when the wicked rise, they do it in the dark, they do it in deceptive ways, etc. So, I think that's kind of what it means. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth, confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. And uh, I think this kind of means to other men, to other people. Um, obviously, God knows everybody's sins. God knows everything that we do and that we have done. But it's kind of like somebody who's a liar, somebody who, you know, that's what cover, covering your sins, you know, somebody stole something and someone's like, well, where did that go? It's like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, that's covering his sin because he's lying. And um, so it says he will not prosper. So liars do not prosper. Um, but with confession, there is forgiveness. There can be mercy. You know, um, happy is the man that feareth alway, but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. I guess we're talking about fearing God. It's not, it's not happy the man who is, you know, afraid to go outside or something. I don't see how you could be happy if that was the case, if you're afraid of everything. But, um, you know, being righteous and he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. Somebody that hardens their heart. Not somebody who fears God 
and they don't care about any of the consequences of their actions. They're not a humble person. As a roaring lion and a raging bear, so is a wicked ruler over the people. And so... A ruler... Uh, uh, so, I'm sorry, it said so it's a wicked ruler. I don't even know if I read that when I first... A wicked ruler. Okay, that's not a good thing. Uh, he could ravage people like a lion or a bear. The destruction. The prince that want, wants it, understanding, is also a great oppressor. The prince that wanteth understanding is also a great oppressor. But he that hateth covetousness shall prolong his days. So I wonder what it means is also a great oppressor. I mean, I guess because he talks about how the wicked ruler can oppress people over the poor people, what it said with the wicked ruler. The prince that wanteth understanding. Could mean I wonder I wonder if it means that one is understanding, not like he desires to have understanding. But it could be like he doesn't have the understanding. I guess like if something is wanted it's lacking. So it could be, you know, the prince that doesn't have understanding. Not that he's necessarily looking for it. But he that hateth covetousness shall prolong his days. Okay, and so it could be talking about the wicked ruler wanting more and more riches. So he just takes more from the poor who don't already have it. You know, he doesn't share the wealth. He's not the help the poor out. And uh, I'm not trying to mean like a socialist way, I guess. I mean, whatever, you know, he's not creating or whatever. He just wants to enslave people. So... But he that hateth covenant shall belong to me. Anyway, a man that doeth violence to the blood of any person shall flee to the pit. Let no man save him. Pretty straightforward. So walketh uprightly shall be saved, but he that is perverse in the way shall fall at last. He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread, but he that followeth after vain persons shall have poverty enough. A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. It's interesting how it says, shall not be innocent. <laughs> he that maketh haste to be rich. Mm hmm. Trying to get rich in unrighteous ways, I guess. To have respect of persons is not good. For for a piece of bread that man will transgress. <laughs> hmm. That's interesting too. We know that God's not a respecter of persons. There's another verse that says that. You shouldn't just choose one person over the other. Um, because, I mean, it's, it's good for us to have judgment and everything, I guess, but Uh, we need to try to treat mankind equally, in a way. And uh, people can e easily turn sides, I guess is basically what it's saying. He that hasteth to be rich 
hath an evil eye, and considereth not that poverty shall come upon him. And that's a great error on that person's part. He that, um, let's see, he that rebuketh a man afterwards shall find more favor than he that flattereth with the tongue. So, you know, sometimes people respect being corrected and you know to always flatter people to always go along with everything you know, kind of like you're being fake in a way <laughs> and, uh, so it's always good to rebuke and correct people. We've seen that a lot in Proverbs, but, you know, not to correct every single thing that every person does. <laughs> so, um, Whoso robbeth his father or his mother, and saith, It is no transgression, the same is the companion of a destroyer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's against the Ten Commandments. So, he that is proud... He is a, that a, of a proud heart stirreth up strife, but he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. Hiding your eyes from the poor. Don't do that. And when it says that he that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, you know, if it's talking about giving to the poor food or money or whatever, clothes, we think of those things. And it doesn't mean that that person wouldn't have an abundance of those either. But, you know, that's the way that I look at it. But... I mean, when I read it, it says, He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack. Okay. So if you give us the poor money, it doesn't mean that you you won't lack of money. Uh, but it means that, basically, you have other things that are more valuable than items. Um, because it's a blessing to bless others. Okay, in a sense. And so, you kind of have that joy of being able to help out other people. And, um, you, you, mean, you know, you, you can have peace and, and, and all those things. You know, I have to put my mind to this a little bit more. But, you, you know, basically kind of what I said, if, if you bless others, you know, it's a blessing onto you. And that doesn't mean if you bless others with money, it's a blessing with money onto you. It means, you know, in other ways, you won't be lacking. In ways that the person who hides their eyes can be severely lacking. And those things can be more damaging than having money. Whatever. I mean, we see that over and over again in Proverbs, that, you know, it's better to be poor and upright than to be wealthy and wicked or whatever, to be a fool. When the wicked rise, men hide themselves, but when they perish, the righteous increase. And so, see, that makes me rethink what I said earlier when it talks about when the wicked rise, a man is hidden. Because here it says basically the same thing, it explains a little more, men hide themselves. But, I mean, no, 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 never mind. It could, it could mean the same thing that I said. The men hiding themselves could be the wicked. But when they perish. But it doesn't, no, it doesn't seem like that. I keep going back and forth on what I'm trying to interpret here. But it seems like when the wicked rise, you know, other people will hide themselves out of fear of the wicked or whatever. But when they perish the righteous increase. But it makes it sound like then the, the righteous would be hiding, but then, you know, earlier it talks about how the righteous are bold and stuff, too. Um, 
But yeah, I think it generally means maybe not necessarily that the wicked are the ones that are hiding. But I'd like to look at commentaries on that. It's really interesting. But yeah, it's good that, you know, when they perish, the righteous increase. Um, so anyway, that's the end of it. So that's Proverbs 28. I'm going to get this uploaded 25 minutes. So God bless, guys. Hopefully I'll be doing a lot more soon. So bye-bye. Thank you.